A gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico. Back with you all once again for episode number 201 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is March 24th, 2021. We'll be covering the week of March 24th to the 30th in this episode. And it is our 374th day living under COVID-19 restrictions. So programming notes, uh, this is going to be a new format today. We spent the last year in pretty much the same format with lots of different segments and covering births and deaths and this day in history, etc. But we decided after a year to take a departure from that and come back with a new format. Now, the Saturday show with the Countess is going to remain pretty much the same. But this Wednesday show is going to be just one history segment, National Days will come first. And maybe a little segment at the end. We're going to do a second segment today, but it ties back to the first segment. So anyway, you'll see. Hope you like it. And please let us know if you have any suggestions. We're still working this out. It's a work in progress. So like, comment, and subscribe down below. Also, if you would like to make a donation to the Countess and myself to help keep us going, here's the information for that. One more announcement. The tours begin again, April 17. We'll be touring on Saturdays from 11 a.m. Emperor Norton's fantastic San Francisco time machine from Union Square. More information, EmperorNortonTour.com. It'll be good to be back on the streets, indeed. Well, let's begin today with our national days. Starting with the 24th today, is National Cocktail Day. How very appropriate, as you shall see. The 25th is National Waffle Day. Or maybe it isn't. The 26th, National Spinach Day. Well, that's a good one for Popeye, isn't it? The 27th, uh, to all of our friends of the Jewish persuasion, is Passover. Hak Sameach Pesach, to all of you. The 28th is Respect Your Cat Day. They won't let us get away without respecting them all. You know we have four. The 29th is National Mom and Pop Business Owners Day. And they have really fallen on hard times during the pandemic, so please patronize your local mom and pop business. And finally, the 30th is National Pencil Day. Yes, we use one to put this vlog together. Who remembers pencils? I think they're still around. Maybe not. So let's move on now to our segment. As I said, this is going to be just one story. We're going to dig in depth. Sometimes they're going to be tied to a specific date on the calendar. Sometimes they're not. And today we are beginning with the martini, our favorite cocktail. But it's steeped in lore and controversy. Without a doubt, the martini is the king of cocktails. It almost it is also the most controversial. For such a simple drink, arguments abound over its ingredients. Gin or vodka, we're going to talk about that later on. Preparation, shaken or stirred. Proportions, ratio of gin to vermouth. Presentation, on the rocks or up. And garnish, olive, onion, Lemon twist? It's up to you. The martini has inspired writers and public figures. Of its allure, James Thurber wrote, one martini is all right, two are too many, and three are not enough. In her tongue-in-cheek style, Dorothy Parker said, I'd like to have a martini, two of the very most. After three, I'm under the table. After four, I'm under my host. Ooh, racy. Ogden Nash, the great poet, wrote, There is something about a martini, a tingle remarkably pleasant, a yellow, a mellow martini. I wish I had one present. There is something about the martini, air, the dining and dancing begin. But to tell you the truth, it's not the vermouth. I think that perhaps it's the gin. We'll talk about gins a little later on. 
It is said that Winston Churchill preferred his martinis so dry that his recipe called for glancing at a bottle of vermouth from across the room while pouring gin into the cocktail shaker. He liked them very dry. Ian Fleming's famous character, Agent 007 James Bond, preferred his martinis shaken, not stirred. However, he used vodka with a lemon twist. We'll, as I said, talk about that. Which leads us to a discussion about martinis that contain anything but gin, a subject, as I said, we will shall address at the end of today's segment. Equally controversial is the martini's origin. There is no agreement, but two, the, two, the, the store, two of the stories pardon me, are California-based. One places the cocktail's invention in a bar of San Francisco's Occidental Hotel, which stood at the corner of Montgomery and Bush Streets until it was destroyed in the Great Earthquake and Fire of 1906. During the Great California Gold Rush of 1849, the hotel's bartender, the legendary Professor Jerry Thomas, inventor of the Blue Blazer cocktail, We'll do a show about that at some point. Was on duty when a patron traveling to Martinez, California, a city in the northern part of the San Francisco Bay Area, walked into the bar, plunked down a gold nugget, and told Thomas to mix him something different. The story goes that Thomas created a drink on the spot, which he dubbed the Martinez Cocktail in honor of the patron's destination. However, a recipe for a martini does not appear in Thomas's 1862 bar Tender's book. The second story places the martini's origin in the city of Martinez at the bar of Julio Richillo, when in 1870 a gold miner entered his, entered his establishment and threw down a tobacco bag full of gold dust to fill his bottle with whiskey. The miner thought he could, should get more than just whiskey, so Richelieu concocted the drink on the spot. When asked what it was, Richelieu exclaimed, that's a Martinez cocktail. Now, Richelieu would later open a bar in San Francisco at the corner of Market and Kearney called Lotta's Fountain. It was right by Lotta's Fountain. Now, today, a plaque stands in Martinez at the corner of Alhambra and Masonic Streets proclaiming the birthplace of the Martini there. It was erected by the ancient and honorable order of E. Clampus Vitus, the Clampers who have never been able to decide whether they are a historical drinking society or a drinking historical society. Why not both? Both stories state that the Martinez's moniker was shortened to Martini because after consuming a few of them, the patrons could no longer pronounce Martinez properly, and it came out sounding more like Martini. The original Martinez cocktail calls for Old Tom Gin, which is considerably sweeter than English dry gin, Angostura bitters or orange bitters, and maraschino, maraschino, excuse me, liqueur, a far cry from today's dry martini. We'll talk about that recipe a little later on as well. Now, some bars in San Francisco have resurrected the original Martinez cocktail and served them to this day. Well, when they were open. The third story places the martini's origin at Manhattan's Knickerbocker Hotel by a bartender named Martini de Arma di Taglia, di Taglia, pardon me, an Italian immigrant who claimed to concoct the drink prior to World War I. An alternate version says it was named after the martini and Rossi vermouth used in its concoction. Now, yet another story places its origin in Turin, Italy in 1863, also naming it for the vermouth that was used to make it. Whichever story is correct, California is proud of this legendary drink's origins, and it continues to reign supreme in popularity, even sprawling endless variations, which, as I said, we shall address. San Francisco's elegant top-of-the-mark bar features one hundred varieties. In fact, there are hundreds of recipes for martinis, some of which bear little resemblance to the classic, using ingredients like mm, chocolate, apple liqueur, coffee, or olive juice, pickle juice, all kinds of different things. Purists, however, insist that a true martini must contain only two ingredients, dry gin and vermouth. Let's uh, come up with some more quotes for the martini, or about the martini. I am prepared to believe that a dry martini slightly impairs the palate, but think what it does for the soul, said Alec Waugh, the inventor of the cocktail party, it is said. 
I am prepared to believe that a dry martini slightly impairs the palate. Oh, I said that already. That also might have been said by, the, by actor Martin Friedman. Sorry about that. I have never tasted anything so cool and clean. They make me feel civilized. That was said by former President Gerald Ford. I'd like a dry martini, Mr. Kwok. A very dry martini. Very dry, arid, barren, desiccated. Veritable dust bowl of a martini. I want a martini that can be declared a disaster area. Mix me just such a martini, said Hawkeye Pierce in M.A.S.H. Happiness is finding two olives in your martini when you're hungry, said Johnny Carson. Martinis are the only American invention as perfect as a sonnet, said H.L. Mencken. A man must defend his home, his wife, his children, and his martini, said Jackie Gleason. A perfect martini should be made by filling a glass with gin, then waving it in the general direction of Italy, said Noel Coward. I guess he liked his martinis about the same way as Winston Churchill. Happiness is a good woman. I'm oh, sorry, let me start that one again. Happiness is a dry martini and a good woman or a bad woman, said George Burns. And finally, let's get out of these wet clothes and into a dry martini said Mae West. So let's talk about recipes now. The original Martinez cocktail that we talked about earlier is two parts old Tom Gin, which remember is sweet. One part red vermouth, the sweet vermouth. One quarter ounce maraschino or maraschino, depending upon how you prefer to pronounce it, liqueur. One dash angostura or orange bitters a lemon twist for garnish. Place all ingredients in a cocktail shaker with ice cubes. Shake well and strain into a chilled cocktail glass. Garnish with a lemon twist. The classic dry martini is three parts gin, one quarter part dry vermouth, one olive. Place all ingredients in a cocktail shaker with ice cubes. Shake well and strain into a chilled cocktail glass. Garnish with the olive on a cocktail pick. And that, to me, is the classic martini. However, we prefer ours a little wetter. We used to just take the vermouth and pour it into the shaker and then throw it out and then add the gin. So there would just be a kiss of vermouth. But we like our martinis a little wetter, as you will see in just a moment when I, we rather, the Imperial We, will demonstrate to you all how we make our martinis. And so now we're back and we are going to show you how to mix our martini recipe. As we said earlier, <clears throat> we do like things a little bit wetter than the classic dry martini. Now, first of all, you must choose a good gin and we prefer Bombay Sapphire. This is our favorite gin. Another brand that we like is Hendrix. And we would be remiss if we did not mention Raft Distillery's Bummer and Lazarus Gin. Uh, vermouth, well, we prefer Gallo. We know it's cheap, but we like the flavor of it, and it's uh, quite good. Now, those are the only two ingredients as far as we are concerned. And we did talk a little bit earlier about some of those other concoctions, the chocolatini, the uh, vodka martini, the apple tini, no. We're going to address that with a proclamation at the end. A classic martini must only contain gin and vermouth. So for our recipe, we mix six to one. So in other words, we start off with a good measure of one and a half of these little things here. Cocktail measure, jigger, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And then one half portion of the vermouth. So it's three to a half or six to one, basically. Get that up to the half ounce line here. There we go. Shaken or stirred? Well, that's a matter of preference, we suppose. Um, we do prefer shaken. And before you say anything, we know that we overshake our martinis. We like them a little bit cut with water, or bruised, as they say. We think that it makes the gin taste better. And by the way, do not buy inexpensive gin. Life is too short for inexpensive gin. I've had some that taste like baby aspirin. Yuck. Ugh. Now we're going to shake this 
really well, as we said. Oh, one of the things we really hate is when you go to a bar and they shake it three times and then pour it and say, that's a martini. As Rachel Maddow says, shake it until it's very cold and then shake it a little bit more. Okay, I think that qualifies as a little bit more. There we go. Grab the strainer. And pour. A nice dry martini. Garnish? Well, we usually prefer three olives, but we're running a little short, so we're doing one olive today. You could also do lemon peel. Onion. Of course, onion makes it a Gibson, but you can call it a martini, we think. Uh, let's have a taste and see how it is. Mm. Very good. Just the way we like it. So as we said earlier, we are quite disgusted by all these things that call themselves martinis, but are not true martinis. So we have felt it necessary to issue a special proclamation about this. Whereas the martini was allegedly invented in California, and whereas this splendid drink is now enjoyed worldwide, and whereas the martini has been bastardized by taking many forms that bear little to no resemblance to the classic martini, therefore, be it resolved that we, Norton I, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and protector of Mexico in this, the 161st year of our magnificent reign, our 203rd year of existence, do hereby declare and proclaim that from this date forth, a martini shall consist only of gin and vermouth with garnish of choice. All other concoctions commonly referred to as a martini, but using other ingredients are hereby banned from being called a martini and shall be named without using the word martini, given by our imperial hand on this date, the 24th of March, 2021. Cheers. A couple of recommendations for further reading before we depart. Jerry Thomas's Bartender's Guide of 1862, How to Mix Plain and Fancy Drinks, is a wonderful historical compendium that we've talked about a number of times in this vlog. And finally, and it contributed greatly to this episode, The Martini, an Illustrated History of an American Classic by Barnaby Conrad III. Well, that wraps it up for this edition. Until we see you again, stay safe and stay healthy. Be kind to one another. Please like and subscribe down below. We always appreciate donations keeps us in martinis. Also, don't forget, tours are relaunching April 17, EmperorNortonTour.com. Until we see you again, a gracious good day. Mmm.